Stand by for crime. Hi. Chuck Morgan, KOP newscaster speaking. You know, there are a few of us who realize the tragedy of the displaced person. To appreciate just how tough it really is. Imagine yourself having to leave the place of your birth severing connections with all relatives and friends and being set down in a new and strange land where no one even speaks your language. It's not pleasant to think about, is it? Well, here in Los Angeles, we have our quota of DPs. It just happens that my blonde secretary, Carol Curtis, goes on frequent welfare kicks, which is why when I arrived at my office last Wednesday morning, I was given some first-hand information about our local DPs. You're like 90% of the people in this town, Chuck Morgan. You just haven't a sense of responsibility. I haven't? Oh, by the way, that typewriter guy fixed my machine? Chuck, you aren't listening. Oh, sure I am, Grandma. Let's go ahead and talk. Yeah, seems to be running all right. I see. A year ago, you made a hero out of yourself, raving about how we should bring the DPs over here and give them a new start in life. Oh. And now that we've got them here, you don't care that they're being blackmailed. You know, Grandma, but sometimes... What do you mean, blackmailed? Just what I said. It's the most disgraceful thing that was ever done in the name of American democracy. There are five families of displaced persons living in a tenement house on Bulletin Street, and every one of them is paying so-called protection money to a gangster named Igor Petrov. Are you kidding? What's he protecting them against? Against harm being done to their relatives who are still behind the Iron Curtain. No. Well, it's terrible. Those poor people don't understand. They think that Petrov actually has a pipeline to Joe Stalin. Not one of them makes more than a bare living wage, and to have to turn half of it over to a dirty... Half of it? Yes, half of it. And what's being done to stop such an outrage? Nothing. Because people like you... All right, wait a minute, Grandma. Let's take it easy. If such conditions exist, someone would have heard about it before. Now why haven't they gone to the police? The police? Oh, Chuck, don't you know what the word police means to those people? What does it mean? It means beatings and being thrown into a concentration camp and being tortured. It means everything but what it should mean. Justice. Hmm. So this small-time gangster has got them coming and going, huh? He knows they won't go to the police, and he's got them scared into paying off to him or else. That's about the lousiest racket in the book. Hello, Pappy. Come in. Hello, Chuck. Morning, Carol. Hi, Pappy. Say, Chuck, hmm? you got anything hot for your first broadcast tonight? Because if you haven't, I have. Yeah? What's that? A murder. You see? Another routine murder. Pappy, look, Carol's come up with something that's really There's burning. nothing routine about this murder. The victim's name is Jan Darvis. He is, or was, a displaced person living down on Bulletin Street. It seems he went to the police to complain about some kind of a holdup being pulled on him, and he was liquidated. Happy Mansfield is owner of KLP. Usually, he lets me alone regarding the nature of the stuff I use on my broadcast. But occasionally, he gets into a sweat about a particular story and demands that I give it the full treatment. Well, he got into a sweat about this one, which accounts for the fact that five minutes after he'd announced the murder of Jan Darvis, Carol and I were on our way to Bulletin Street. We found Bill Meggs of police headquarters and a couple of uniformed cops at the scene of the murder, which was an alley behind a pool hall. Hello, Bill. Oh, hi, Chuck. Hello, Carol. Hello, Bill. I wondered when you two would be along. Pappy tell you I called? Yeah, he told us. This is where they found the body, eh? Yes, only it wasn't a body when they found it. Darvis was still alive. He didn't die until they got him to the hospital. Did he say anything before he died? Well, he told us he'd gone to a policeman about the protection money he'd been forced to pay. And that's why he was beaten up. Did he tell you the policeman's name? Nope. But we'll find out. Bill, you don't think this policeman had... Sure I do. And don't give me that shocked look. We cops aren't all lily-white any more than everybody in every other business is. So far, we've a pretty clean record. It's going to be cleaner when I get my hands on this particular cop. Any clues, Bill? Well, yes. A set of brass knuckles, for one. Yeah. Blood on them, too, huh? Oh, what horrible-looking things. Not pleasant, that's for sure. You got any theories worked out, Bill? Yeah, I have. From the looks of Darvis's body, I figure that whoever beat him up didn't intend to kill him. I'm just going to use him as an example for the rest of the DPs. Mm -hmm. That's why whoever called emergency hospital and reported the thing wasn't interfered with. I get it. They wanted someone to call the hospital. That's right. This uh, 
Petrov character is too small time to risk getting mixed up with murder. Have you had Petrov picked up? Not yet. Most we could do is hold him for 24 hours for questioning. Yeah, I don't suppose any of the other DPs will talk. No, it's the same old story. They're scared stiff. They don't want the same thing to happen to them or their families. A rotten mess. Bill, what are you going to do about it? Well, just what you and every other representative American would expect me to do, Carol. I'm going to find the murderer of Jan Darvis and send him to the gas chamber. Yeah, it's going to be a tough job, Bill. Anything we can do to help. You know, I know we... something we can do to help right now. Yeah? What's that? Have you talked to Anna Darvis yet? She's Jan's mother. No. That's where I plan to go from here. Well, don't. Let Chuck and me see her first. She's frightened of the police. She has another child, a 12-year-old girl, and she's terrified of what might happen to her. But look, if she won't talk to uh, me... I know her, Bill. I've been calling on her once a month for almost a year. She trusts me. Maybe I can persuade her that the police in America are different, that they actually want to help her. That well, sounds like a good deal, Bill. At least you can't lose anything, man. Yeah, maybe you're right. Okay, you two go up and have a talk with the lady and report your findings to me at headquarters. <laughs> Bulletin Street is one of those crummy districts that few of our respected citizens are aware exist. As Carol and I walked along that dirty, noisy pavement, I marveled at the fact that she'd been making trips down here all by herself once a month just to check on our DPs and other unfortunate families. Now, we came to a two-story adobe tenement house that was sandwiched in between two larger but equally disreputable-looking frame buildings. We went inside. I walked up a flight of dusty stairs, down a short hall, and stopped in front of a door that was hanging on one hinge with the latch sprung. What happened here? Looks as though someone broke the door down. It wasn't like this when I was here yesterday. This... Yeah. It's Anna, poor thing. Let's go in. We pushed open what remained of the door and entered the tiniest living room I've ever been in. A single window opened onto an air shaft. The room itself was spotless. The furniture, though old, was neat and in good taste. Snowy white curtains were at the window. To the right, a door led to the kitchen. What we could see of it was as meticulously clean as a living room. It was in this room that we heard the sobbing. It had stopped now. There was an ominous silence. We crossed to the kitchen and entered. A woman, perhaps 50 years old, was seated at the table. Her face was bruised and bloody. One eye was blackened. The look she gave us was wild and terrified. Oh, Anna, what happened? Oh, you poor thing. Go away, please. Do not stay here. But we want to help you. That's why we came. No. Everyone is evil in this wicked America. Do you think that I am evil, Anna? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... I cannot say anything. What happened to your face, Anna? Nothing. It is nothing. Oh, Anna, this is Chuck Morgan. He's a radio newscaster. He wants to help you, and so do the police. The police? Now, we understand why you feel the way you do, Anna, but if we're going to help you, you must tell us what happened. No. Telling would not bring back my Jan. My Jan is dead. Now I have only little Maria. Poor little Maria. She is so frightened. It is like in the concentration camps. But then we always had the dream of coming to America. It was a beautiful dream, America. If it were not for that dream, most of us would have died. And now, now... Please, Anna, please. Where is Maria now, Anna? No, I will not tell. The evil men will not have my little Maria. They can kill me and I will not tell. Anna, perhaps if oh, you wait knew Wait a minute, what... Chuck. Anna, you trust me, don't you? You have been kind, Miss Curtis. Of all the people, you have been kind. And if I were to make you a promise, you know I'd keep it. I will not tell. I will not. Anna, the only way we can help you as we want to do is to have your cooperation. We understand how you feel, how much afraid you are. We don't want anything to happen to Maria either. That's why I suggest that you let us take you away from here. You and Maria both. Take us away? Away from them? Yes, away from them. I have an apartment up on Wilshire Boulevard. You can stay there. Miss Curtis will stay with you. We'll have a half a dozen policemen guarding the place until this rotten mess is cleaned up. Then I'll not have to stay here alone. It's a promise, Anna. You have my word for it. But first you must tell us what happened. Yes. 
Then I will tell you. It was last night, about nine o'clock, I think. I was alone here in our home. Someone knocked on the door. Yes? Who is it, please? Never mind who it is. Open up this door before I break it down. No, this is my home. You cannot come in. No, I can't, eh? Don't tell me what I can't do, old lady. In this district, Igor Petrov goes where he pleases and no one stops him, see? Then you are Igor Petrov? You heard me. Where's that yellow-livered kid of yours? If you mean Jan, he is not here. Now you must go. I'll go when I get ready. Oh, no, please. You must not break our furniture. We have so little. Yeah? Well, you're going to have a lot less when I get through. Where's the kid? I do not know. Where is he? No, please. My boy is not here. He's hiding. Where? I will not tell you. I will not. Listen, you old buzzard. I ain't got much time. That red-faced brat of yours went to the cops. He squealed. Now, don't tell me you didn't know about that. Yes. My boy did go to the police. I am proud of him for doing that. He is brave, my Jan. He wants what is right and no more. He, he does not think that here in America it is right for evil men to take any part of money that is hard earned by honest people. This America is to us a wonderful land. And we believe the police will protect us if we tell them the truth. Yeah? <laughs> well, let me tell you something, old lady. The cop your kid squealed to is on my payroll. Get that? He does what Igor Petrov says. And so does everybody else in this district. I'm boss here. Nobody crosses me. Nobody. And that goes for that punk kid of yours. Now, where is he? I will never tell. Never. No? When I get through with you, you'll tell her you'll think that concentration camp you were in was a bed of roses. Where is he? No. Oh. Where is he? Where? No. Where? Oh. Where? Oh. It was horrible. Yes, it was horrible. Worse, I think, than the camps. Did you tell me your son was, Anna? No. Jan came home while Petrov was still here. He is a little man, my Jan. He was no match for the man who was beating me. How awful. Did Petrov take Jan away? Yes, he took Jan away. And now my Jan is dead. <laughs> Anna, no one can blame you for your present opinions of Americans. Except for Caro, our people haven't been very well represented among those you've met. That's going to change, beginning right now. Carol, I want you to pick up Maria, wherever she is, and take both her and Anna out to my apartment. I'll phone Bill Meggs, tell him the story, and ask him to send some cops out. All right. But, Chuck... Yeah? What are you going to do? I'm going to make a call. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to make a call. I want to demonstrate to a certain district gang boss that here in America we don't tolerate gutter rats. Conclusion of Stand By for Crime. News people learn to get hard boiled about human suffering and human weaknesses. They have to. If they didn't, it wouldn't last long. But every once in a while, you run across something that hits you personally, and it's different. Then you cease to be a newsman for a little while and become yourself. That's what happened to me after listening to Anna Darvis's story. It affected me personally because I was an American. And Igor Petrov was representing himself as an American. And when I thought of it, I felt unclean. There was a fighting desire inside of me to correct the situation. So I wouldn't be ashamed of being a citizen of these United States. All right, maybe I wasn't using my head, but that's all right, too. I was boiling mad when I opened the door of the joint that Igor Petrov called his headquarters. The place seemed deserted. Then a human rat came shuffling out of the gloom and leered up at me. Hello, Morgan. You looking for somebody? Well, if it isn't little Benny Capek, San Quentin's latest contribution to the scum of society. Lay off, Morgan. You can't talk to me like that. Ain't easy pushover I was two years ago. Oh, you ain't, ain't you? 
For my money, Kate Peck, you always be a cross between a whiz and a wharf rat. What have you done? Tied in with Petrov? Yeah. Yeah, I've tied in with Petrov. Which means that neither you nor the cops can touch me. No? Wouldn't you be surprised if you found you bought yourself another ticket to San Quentin? Where is that tin horn boss of yours? I want to see him. What'll I tell him you want to see him about? I want to remind him how to act when he talks to a lady. Out of my way, slime face, before I start in on oh, you. you. Come back here. You can't go in there. Okay, Peck, this is all I needed for an excuse. <laughs> Hello, Petrov. Morgan, who let you in here? I invited myself. Rat, come from behind that desk, brother. This is something I'm going to enjoy. Where did you? Take back, spider! That's right. Call your rats, but first I want to give you a little lesson in good manners. Am I getting my point across, Petrov? Boys, help! Get back! Calling yourself an American. Why, you aren't fit to lick the boots of those people. Help! Boys! Okay, help. boss! Coming. Come on, boys. Get him. Get him. Get him. But, Bill, Chuck's been gone almost three hours. That means he's either in trouble or dead. How can you and Pappy calmly sit here smoking cigarettes and not even worry about him? I am worried about him. When he called me on the phone, he asked me if I'd give him until six o'clock before I picked up Petrov. Said he had a plan. Chuck's plans usually pay off, Carol. Oh, not always. Why, I've seen him so beaten up, he looked as though he'd been run through a meat grinder. I didn't say he didn't get himself worked over occasionally. He's a glutton for it. But he usually gets what he goes after. Oh, you men. We have Mrs. Darvis's story. Isn't that enough to arrest Petrofon, for heaven's sake? She was an eyewitness. Not to Jan Darvis's murder. That's why Chuck wanted some time. He thinks he can get the information that'll pin the murder rap on Petrov. My guess is he'll do it, too. Mine, too. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Carol, why don't you quit saying for heaven's sakes and just sit down and relax? Relax? How would you feel if your boyfriend were in danger of being murdered? I haven't got a boyfriend. That's not very funny, Pappy. Sorry. Oh, forget it. i tell you what I'll do, Carol. If we don't hear from Chuck within the next 15 minutes, all three of us will take a run down to Bulletin Street and have a look around. Okay? Do I have a choice of answers? 15 minutes isn't long to wait. The chances are, right now, Chuck is on his way back here with Petrov as his prisoner. And a full confession in his pocket. Oh. Oh. Oh, my head. Take it easy, Morgan. You live. Uh, oh, k Yeah. Yeah, k -Pack. Only now the situation's a little different. Ain't it, Morgan? You dirty rat, untie my hands. Yeah, I'm apt to untie your hands. Oh. Having fun, Kepek? Yeah. Yeah, I'm having me a dandy time, boss. Petrov, if you had a brain in your head, you'd know you couldn't get away with it. I've got a brain in my head, and I am getting away with this. You ready to talk, Morgan? About what? You know about what. Hey, you hit the old lady and the kid. I've already told you, they're in my apartment on Wilshire. There are seven cops guarding the place. And I say there ain't no one in your apartment on Wilshire. And I say there is. And why don't they answer the phone? Maybe they don't want to. If they're not in my apartment, they're at police headquarters. Why don't you call the chief? Okay, Morgan, suit yourself. You ready to play some more, Kepek? Boss, ain't nothing I'd rather do. All right, you got 15 minutes. Make him talk in that time, or you and me is going to have an understanding. Oh, I'll make him talk. Just leave me alone with him. I got my own particular methods. So Petrov went out of there, and Kepek began having his fun. Only this time I wasn't as cooperative as before. I passed out almost at once, or pretended to. This made Kepek mad. There wasn't any fun beating an unconscious man. But it also gave me time to think. I told Bill Meggs I had a plan. That was partly to keep Bill away from Bulletin Street until I had had a go at this deal myself. And partly because there had been an idea in the back of my head. But what was it? At the time, I'd been too mad to analyze its worth. Then I remembered the brass knuckles that Bill had found. But what about them? There'd been dried blood in those knuckles. Sure, sure, that was it. Dried blood. Well, it wasn't much of a plan. 
but in my present situation, who was I to be choosy? I cautiously opened one eye and saw Capex sitting two feet away watching me. Okay, Morgan. You ready for some more? Hold it, Capex. I've got something to say. You bit ahead. Go on. Talk. What about the brass knuckles? Huh? What about the brass knuckles? They're going to prove that you murdered Jan Davis. They're going to send you back to San Quentin. This time with a reserve seat in the gas chamber. He ain't going to prove nothing. Now cut it. Wait a minute. There was blood on those knuckles, Capex. Your blood. So how's anybody going to prove that? Easy. The cops will take a sample of your blood, compare it with the blood on the brass knuckles, and you'll be charged with murder. Hey, you're crazy. Anyway, they want my knuckles. I didn't have nothing to do with... With what, Capex? None of your business. Now, are you going to see... So far, I... you've been nothing but a small-time operator, Capex. Murder's out of your line. The only way you can save yourself from the gas chamber is to tell me who owns those brass knuckles. Turn me loose. Shut up, but I won't do it. I can save you from the gas chamber, Capex. I'm the only one who can. Petrov will double-cross you in a minute. The cops are on their way here right now. You haven't got much time. You kidding me, Morgan? I'm giving it to you straight. Mrs. Davis has already told her story to the police. The only reason you and Petrov haven't been picked up yet is because they didn't have proof of the murder. Now they've got it with the blood on those brass knuckles. Can you see that I don't get no murder back? Yes. I, I don't want to take no rap for nothing I didn't do. Then you won't. It's a promise. Okay, Morgan. I'll take a chance. But if you pull a cross on I me... I never pulled a cross on anybody in my life. Now hurry up. We haven't got much time. I held my breath while Capek worked on the ropes for fear he changed his mind. One hand came free. The little weasel was working on the last knot of the second hand when the door opened. Capek! What the devil... Take it easy, Petrov. Capek and I have made a deal. He's going to turn state's evidence on you, and I'm going to see that he doesn't take a rap for a murder you committed. Why? You... Come on, Capek, let's get him. You're a lousy shot. Too bad because you won't get a chance for another... <laughs> well... Pappy, Bill Meg's Glamorpus. Fancy meeting you here. Well, Anna Davis and her daughter Maria are back in their tiny apartment on Bulletin Street. They like it there. To them, it's heaven compared to what they've been used to. They like America, too. The American way of life. Their dream has really come true. They'll make good citizens. Petrov is awaiting trial for murder. There's no longer any district gang boss on Bulletin Street. There never will be again if Bill Meggs has anything to do with it. And Bill has a lot to do with such things. Speaking of Bill, after my 7 o'clock broadcast that night, he and Carol, Pappy and I, went over to Mike Lyman's for dinner. Say, Chuck, before we leave here, I've got just one question I'd like to ask you. Yeah, Yeah, and after you answer that one, I've got a question, too. And at the risk of sounding parrot-like, I have a question also. (laughs) Shoot, Pappy. About this dried blood gimmick, comparing Mm -hmm. it with a sample of blood taken from a person. Who told you that a comparison would establish identity? Nobody. Then how'd you know? I didn't. Does it? You see, you don't know either. So how could Capek be expected to know? You mean you just made that one up out of thin air because it sounded like a good idea? Why, sure. Now, what's your question, Bill? How about that deal you made with Capek? What right had you to promise him he wouldn't have to take a murder rap if he turned state's evidence? Because I have a friend on the police force who's a very nice guy and who I knew would stand behind me. His name is Bill Meggs. Oh, and... You see, you can't win with this man. He talks his way out of everything. And now, at last but not least, we come to your question, Glamour What is it? Oh, never mind. I just answered it myself. Oh? When I said you can't win with this man, or can I? Glamour Puss, as far as I'm concerned, you won three years ago. The day I hired you, remember? Oh, Chucky boy, you say the nicest thing. (laughs) 